Mr. Speaker, uh, we have some good news uh, in the bill that has just been uh, released uh, that is a major tax bill here in the House of Representatives that will be uh, moving uh, through the House and uh, likely coming up for a vote very soon. Uh, the good news is that several measures that I have uh, co-sponsored uh, that provide important tax relief have made it in uh, to this tax bill. And I wanted to provide a few examples because these are significant ways in which we are now using the tax code uh, in order to stimulate the right kinds of economic activity. So one of the measures that made it into the bill is H.R. 2673, the American Innovation and R&D Competitiveness Act. What this does is eliminates the five-year amortization requirement for research and experimental expenditures, thereby allowing continued expensing of such expenditures in the taxable year in which they are incurred. What this does is it enhances the competitiveness of U.S. Co companies, uh, particularly when it comes to competition with China uh, and, and otherwise across the board. Another provision that's very important that's found its way into this bill is H.R. 2406, the Align Act. What it does is makes permanent the expensing of certain new business equipment. This expensing allows the deduction of the full amount of an expensable item in the same taxable year instead of being depreciated under the current IRS rules. Again, this is a very important provision for uh, stimulating uh, manufacturing and enhancing our competitiveness here in the United States. A third measure which, is which has made its way into this tax bill uh, is H.R. 4970. That is the Protect Innocent Victims of Taxation After Fire Act. Uh, this measure, which I've co-sponsored, excludes from gross income for income tax purpose any amount received after 2019 and before 2026 by an individual taxpayer as a qualified wildfire relief payment. It defines such payment as compensation for expenses or losses incurred as a result of a federal declared forest or range fire disaster. So this is just common sense uh, and much needed. It corrects an injustice for Californians who have suffered greatly because of our state's catastrophic wildfires and then found they were going to be taxed on the settlements and compensation that they received. And finally, within this broader tax bill is another measure that I've co-sponsored, H.R. 3238, the Affordable Housing Credit Improvement Act. Now, this does a number of things to stimulate housing production that we so dire direly need in the state of California. It increases the per capita dollar amount of the affordable housing credit and its minimum ceiling amount beginning in 2023, and it extends the inflation adjustment uh, for such amounts. The Low Income Housing Tax Credit subsidizes the acquisition, construction, and rehabilitation of affordable rental housing for low and moderate income tenants. That's what we're talking about here. And this measure that's now been included in the broader tax bill extends and updates it to create new housing opportunities in California and across the country. Uh, it also increases the number of credits allocated to each state. That is, the legislation would increase the number of credits available to states by 50 percent for the next two years and make the temporary 12.5 percent increase secured in 2018 permanent, which has already helped build more than 59,000 affordable housing units nationwide. It also increases the number of affordable housing projects that can be built using private activity bonds. This provision would stabilize financing for workforce housing projects built using private activity bonds by decreasing the amount of private activity bonds needed to secure housing credit funding. As a result, projects will have to carry less debt and more projects will be eligible to receive funding. And finally, this improves the housing credit program to better serve at-risk and underserved communities. This legislation would also make improvements to the program to better serve veterans, victims of domestic violence, formerly homeless students, Native American communities, and rural Americans. I look forward to the opportunity to support this bill and enact these provisions into law that will stimulate our economy, will stimulate housing, and will provide the full measure of compensation for wildfire victims in our state.